This will be the D4 blog post update for December 2020. We're going to learn about introduction. Nice. I always want to learn about introductions. Skill trees, primary stats, weapon types, item qualities, legendary affixes, and uniques. Hello and welcome once again to the Diablo 4 quarterly update. This is our last one for 2020. That makes sense. It's December after all. Progress on the game continues at a steady clip and we're excited about several big updates and revisions that the teams worked on for a long time that we're trying to complete before the holidays. Today's topic centers on one such major revision, which also happens to be the most requested topic of the year. Itemization. Now this is a huge topic. What's up, Castile? This is huge, man. I'm nervous. Items are the lifeblood of Diablo, I agree. They are the elemental, wait, they are the element of the game that captures your imagination and keeps you playing and wondering what if after you put the game down. Yeah. Yeah, I've been playing Cyberpunk and I'm like, well, what happens when I get this perk or what happens when I get this thing or, yeah, I mean like your build to me is everything. Your character and your build is just about everything. You know, it makes Diablo compelling. I agree, I agree. Understanding how important it is to get itemization right, we paid special attention to early player feedback. Man, the community had some fiery feedback too. Itemization is probably one of the most hot button topics. We knew that many more iterations awaited between what we showed you at BlizzCon, our follow-up blogs, and the final game release. We also knew that from past Diablo entries, we will need to have the time and resources to make these iterations. Thankfully, we have that baked into our current schedule. Getting all your feedback encourage us to move some of that iteration time forward so we can get our newest direction sooner. Lead game designer Joe Shelley. I met this guy a few times. He's a really nice guy. I met him at the Necromancer Summit, at BlizzCon a few times. <clears throat> Is going to walk us through all of our major itemization updates today. Uh, we reviewed every aspect of itemization from top to bottom and reworked elements that we felt weren't living up to their potential. Hopefully they removed demonic power. <laughs> uh, from the individual stats that our classes tap into to our visual representation of items in your inventory, of course. It is still early, and we have lots more playtesting and iterating to do, but we think this direction puts us down a more solid foundational path that we couldn't be happier to share with you today. Right. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead because I'm getting anxious. Our next update will take place during BlizzCon. That's at the end of February, right? Mid-February? That's cool. Without spoiling the surprise, let's just say it involves a new version of the campfire scene. If there's a new campfire scene, that means new classes, right? It means new classes, right? It's gotta be. Oh, at least one. A, maybe we'll get to see about the, I don't know. We have to have a ranged physical damage. It has to be like an Amazon or a rogue, right? It's just gotta be. See you in hell, yeah. Today we're going to look at some changes to items in Diablo 4 and update you on a few things we've shared in our previous development blogs. Strengthen class identity, um, intuitive fantasy hooks and skills that lean into the fantasy of your class, deeper customization, this is all shit we want to hear, I mean this is pretty good. Uh, finally, we're landing on overall depth somewhere between Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. I like that, that's what I always asked for, yeah that's perfect. We aim to provide years of things to discover and countless ways to build a class. Man. We're brewing your feedback. Hands on time with skill trees. Play testing. We're increasing the clustering of related skill nodes so players don't have to go across the tree to find upgrades for their builds. Oh, they're probably going to show a picture, huh? The ability to respecialize or respect your skills is a tricky one to balance like many of you want choices that matter and characters to feel different, not just one click away from being identical to others. 
I mean, having a PvP in the game, you should be able, in my opinion, right? This is a hot topic too. You should be able to respec as much as you want. Maybe it costs money, but otherwise it's like, you're, you're gonna kill PvP because there's gonna be PvE builds that are better than PvP builds. And if you can't switch on the fly, then, or unless you have like a dual spec, like it's kind of like, how can you even, you know what I'm saying? We also want to encourage players to experiment with different skills when they start playing and discover builds that are right for them. Yeah, bricking your character is just like not for Diablo 4 in my opinion. And, and IMO, right? In Diablo 4 you will be able to respec your skills and passives, that's good. The number of times you can do this will be unlimited, but it won't be free. It will be easy to do when you first start. As your character grows, the effort cost required to respec will grow too. In the end game, changing your build requires significant investment. I don't, are they realizing that we need to have a PVP spec? <laughs> Shit. Okay. In our last blog, we agreed with your feedback that too much of a character's power came from the items they wore. Uh, whose feedback was that? <laughs> what? And we like the imagery conjure, uh, conjured by the phrases angelic power and demonic power. But we didn't reinforce the fantasy of what being a barbarian or sorcerer or druid is all about. So we went back to the roots and looked at the classic RPG elements of early Diablo games. What you're really doing when you wade through the horde of monsters and emerge at a higher level. You're training, you're practicing a skill, you're getting better at what you do, becoming stronger and smarter. Okay, here's stuff. Strength, they still have attack and defense, so, okay. Strength, intelligence, willpower, dex. Equipment, quest, materials, mount, character skills. This is pretty much almost what it was, right? What are they showing here? After gaining, gaining a level, our barb has received five stat points and two skill points. Okay. Maybe this wasn't here before. So it is like classic. Okay, this is what they're saying. Okay. And the skill points go in the tree. All right. When you gain a level, you receive points to spend in strength, int, dex, or willpower along with your skill points. Of course, most barbarian builds are going to benefit from a healthy measure of strength, but as you build your character and decide on skills and synergies, you'll want to mix in other attributes. Uh, willpower, increased resource generation, and improves healing received. Huh. So strength increases skill damage, but intelligence does not. Oh, for a barb it doesn't, but for a sorceress it does. Increases skill damage. Hmm, okay. They have different things for different classes. Right, right, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Resource generation by 1%. Okay. But strength still increases defense. Just like in Diablo 3, right? You, the, like the strength will give you armor. All res. Intelligence gives you all res just like in D3. Scrolls are back. It looks like scrolls and potions are all here still, which is... Mm, I don't know. It's kind of nice and classic, but it's also kind of like... Uh, outdated you know if there's not a lot then it makes it like a resource then it makes it like a currency like if there if you can't just get infinite amounts like in poe you eventually get infinite amounts right so it's useless but if you don't get infinite some infinite amount then you'll it'll be like you know you'll be coveting it i guess it'll be like oh man but 
If you get an infinite amount, then it's just like, uh, you might as well just make it free, and then that's kind of what, you know? Then you can use it as trading currency or something, if it's like a valuable resource or whatever. As a barb, each point of strength will increase the damage of your skills, while willpower improves fury generation and dex grants crit. Meanwhile, as a sork, yeah, yeah, we pretty much read this right here. Okay. You can supplement your character's stat build with items to give it a little bit more willpower, a little bit more strength here and there, but the vast majority of your stats will come from how you choose to spend your points. Here's where it gets really interesting. Many of the nodes in each class skill tree have additional effects that meet specific primary stat thresholds. This is a great thing. This is fun. I haven't even really looked ahead, but I kind of know what they're getting at. You'll get a baseline effect. It's kind of like cyberpunk, right? Or like a lot of games do this. When you get to a certain amount, you get like a perk. You'll get the baseline effect of these nodes when you spend skill points to unlock them, but get enough of the corresponding primary stat and the bonus effect will activate. Fury. Rapidly attack nearby enemies, deals physical damage. Whirlwind upgrade. Whirlwind restores one fury each time you hit an enemy. You want to think carefully about how you allocate your stat points to activate these effects. Okay, maybe I don't understand. Oh, at 140 willpower, ice blades deal additional damage. At 225 strength whirl and, and dex, whirlwind provides one crit critical strike damage per second while active, stacking up to 20%. Okay, that makes sense. Whirlwind provides a 3% movement speed boost for each second. Having two stats makes sense, right? But just stacking one stat, I mean, it's going to happen eventually. But then you're kind of being forced sometimes to do it in a way. Mm -hmm. It depends, you know, it depends like how much. It depends how much like effort. Yo, what's up, chica? <clears throat> it depends how much effort, really, it takes to get to like 140 willpower, right? I don't know. It depends on a lot of factors. Let's talk items. So up to this point, this is anything that makes the game more interesting is a plus. Nothing's bad, right? Anything that we're thinking about putting points into we're leveling, we're clicking on stuff, we're thinking about what we're doing. You know, we're getting, every time we level, we get, there's only 40 levels, by the way. So every time we level, we're getting stat points and we're getting skill points. And when we get uh, to a certain threshold, we're getting more bonuses and we're thinking about what stats we have on our gear. All that's good. All that's good. It still feels hella streamlined. But, yeah, it's only been positive up to this point. You can't like, you know what I mean? It's just like hella streamlined still. It's not like um, 140 willpower grants this, 140 willpower and 140 dex grants this, uh, 300 dex grants this, right? It's just like one thing and you're gonna get 100, you know what I mean? So. I demand you play it. <laughs> So, it's only good. I just wish there was more, right? I was everything I look at. I always want more. Let's talk items. Yeah. Weapon types. As we hinted in our last blog, we're making substantial changes to core itemization. We'll start by looking at the many different weapons available to classes in Diablo 4. Our weapon types look visually distinct and have meaningful effects on gameplay through features like Barbarian's Arsenal. We've also done a lot of work in the game engine 
to make weapons feel more real and physical. So playing it at BlizzCon, it definitely feels visceral and um, the combat feels amazing. So if they made it even better, that's, I mean, I don't even know how, it was already really good. A barbarian carving through and through the ground with upheaval. Mm-hmm. It already felt great. So if it's gonna be better, then that's awesome. Characters in D4 use their weapons to perform skills and channel magical power. But something was still missing. Wands should be faster than quarter staves and swords and maces should do different things. I agree with all this, yeah. Yeah, that was one of my feedback. I was like, maces should have a 5% chance to stun. I like that whole mechanic. Swords should have a chance for attack speed. You know, daggers to crit or whatever. Axes to bleed or slow or something. You know what I mean? Like, I like all, I like more, more, more. We've added weapon speeds and inherent characteristics to all weapons in our latest internal test. This is one of our feedback, so that's awesome if they did do it. I haven't, I don't know though, I'm just guessing ahead of time, right? Uh, Conjured Omen, rare wand, uh, weapon attack, 850, very fast weapon. Um, damage to immobilize enemies, life regeneration. I like that there's six stats on here, technically, that makes me that makes me super, mm. Mm -mm -mm. I love seeing well, at least six, six stats. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. 2020, we've done it. Six stats on an item, wow. Two different weapon choices for a level 20 sorceress. All right. Hallelujah. I know, thank R and Jesus for giving us actual items. Six is like, was our feedback too. I said yellow or rare should have six, legendary should have five. So that way sometimes the yellow slash rare would be better than the legendary, but then legendary has the affix, so it might be better in certain situations, you know? Mm. And then blue should have higher, but should be lower. Like blue should have higher like crit, but only have like three stats on it or something, right? So like a blue would have the same weapon attack or a little bit less, the same attack speed characteristic, and then like double the crit. Like if you just want a full crit build, right? Like in vanilla WoW, you sometimes would use like a crappy blue because it has frost damage or something on it for a while. Even if it was just while leveling or during early progression. Anyway, in general, one-handed weapons excel at letting you attack and reposition quickly. While slower two-handed weapons deal more damage, you can really feel the difference between them. Let's see. Okay, so there's a slow one. And there's a little faster wand, like a Harry Potter wand. I like that. You can opt for a staff to cast more damage. So you get bigger crits or you get more attack speed, right? That's pretty much the old strat. This might crit for a thousand. This might be like 750, but it's faster. The DPS will be about the same over time. In addition to attack speed, each weapon type has an inherent physical characteristic. For shields, it's block value. Meaning that any shield you find in Sanctuary is gonna have its block. In addition to any magical affixes it may have, as physical properties, these traits are consistent across all weapon types of the same and cannot be modified. So shields have block value. Oh, I was looking for more shields. And then, so what do wands have? When they show me a white item, wands crit. Oh, uh, okay. Is it have to read? I just have to read. Keep reading. It should have three white items so I can see the difference. But is it bleed? Did they do it? The physical characteristics of a weapon are shown above. Are the separator in item tooltips? Here are the examples. What do they call it in Poe? Like a implicit? Is it an implicit stat? Axes do bleed? That's awesome, man. They took our feedback. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. They might have already thought about it anyway. You might notice another thing about these items. They're high resolution renders of actual equipment. They often contribute as much to the identity of a cool piece of loot as in-game representation of your character. Items that don't appear on your character like rings are defined by their icons. We've upgraded them.
We've also made some exciting changes to the game's item qualities. Wait, so how do you guys know that? What do wands do? Like, where is this item? So it says right here, axes bleed, but how do I know that's just not an affix? Oh, because it's in the top section. So every axe is going to have, every one-handed axe is going to be fast. It's going to have weapon attack and it's going to have a bleed. Every, every wand is going to be very fast. It's going to have weapon attack and it's going to crit. And then a shield would have defense and then block value. Okay. Cool. So as the top section is like the implicit value. Wait, what does Diablo call it again? <laughs> yeah. Cool. I like that a lot. Very, very much so. I like that very, very much. Blood's super happy. It just makes it cool and like different. Inherent, okay, inherent values. Nice. I like the stats. I like the flavor. It's like not only do classes need, like the Blizzard really does a good job with class fantasy, right? Like if you're a barb, you're gonna look, sound, feel like a barb. You're gonna hit like a barb. Well, items need that too, right? Like an ax needs to feel like an ax. A, a, a mace hammer needs to feel like a mace hammer. You know what I'm saying? Like they also need like this kind of stuff. And uh, legendaries need that too. Like, you know, um, ice climbers need to feel like ice climbers or a thunder fury needs to feel like a thunder fury. Like everything needs an identity and all that stuff too. That pretty much goes with the whole game, right? Cool. Item qualities. <clears throat> We've also made some exciting changes to the game's item qualities. Uh, I can't pronounce that right now. We like to clarify the analysis afforded by clearly understood top tier items. In other words, we think players of skill levels. Um, let me ban this forehead. Cool. We think that players of all skill levels benefit. I might need to add more mods, dude. Benefit from not having to scrutinize every single item that drops to see if it might be an upgrade for them. I mean, okay, so they're saying, we, we think players of all skill levels benefit from not having to scrutinize every single item that they drop. If you know what you're looking for though, then you don't have to scrutinize, you know? If you know what you're looking for then, but if you're new, you're gonna be lost anyway, and the itemization does make you more lost, right? <clears throat> Blue magic items are good, but yellow are usually better. I like the usually part because it's true. There's a great feeling of progression when you graduate into items with greater complexity, more powerful effects, and cooler looks as you level up. And the game-changing powers found on legendary items in Diablo 3 are exciting and offers many possible effects that just aren't possible with regular affixes. That being said, we don't want to end up in a place where the right decision to ignore every item and to just have a glowing yellow orange sky beam. So we're making a lot of exciting changes here. We're increasing the potential power of individual affixes on magic items. Easy, man. This is, yo, we have a feedback video. We won the war, dude. We won the war. We're increasing the maximum number of affixes on rare and better items in the end game. Legendary affixes now roll randomly, yes, randomly, on legendary items and unique items will replace mythics. Damn, what was, why would they replace mythic? I wonder what the change was there. I wonder what the change was there to replace mythics with uniques just because that's like the meta. I wonder what the change was. I don't mind it, I'm just curious. Immobilizing mystical staff. Okay, so staves have slow and then they have resource regeneration. That's pretty cool, man. You could be like, oh, while I'm leveling, I'm resource starved, so I need to use a staff. Resource regen, resource regen. Staff of strength. I think we saw this at BlizzCon, no? Knock down enemies take 46% additional damage from your attacks. Maybe. 
Same damage on all three. Same secondary. Uh, the resource regeneration goes down. One socket, two socket. No socket. Um, one secondary, I guess you'd call it. Or right, would it be a secondary or would it be suffix? 10% to vulnerable enemies crit. <clears throat> I love this yellow item. So sometimes the yellow would be better than here and then sometimes the blue would be better just depending on situations. Magic items can now have the most powerful regular affixes while rare items get up to five and legendary items get four. Bro, I'm so happy. So far they've been crushing it. I feel like this makes the most sense for like the modern Diablo. I feel like this absolutely makes the most sense. Right? You love it too? Awesome, dude. What do you guys think? It's like they watched your feedback video. I mean, I'll, yeah, we came together as a community and thought of like just good ideas. And like a lot of these is like what we subscribe to. Not everybody subscribes to this, but I think this is perfect where it's complex enough for new players and veterans have a chance to look for stuff. <clears throat> I think it's a nice balance, I guess, so far. Legendary affixes. You can think of legendary items as a rare item with one affix replaced with a legendary effect. Yep. These new legendary affixes work just like regular affixes, affixes and that they can roll randomly on different items in different slots. Many can be used by any class while some specific to a particular class. Okay. So there's legendaries for everybody. There's legendaries that are class specific. Pretty much we just assume that. When you stand inside your own damaging ground effect, you increase the damage they deal by 27%. Movement speed on elite kill. Damn, that's pretty good. Dang. They're in take my money territory now. They're doing a good job, yeah. Well, you stand, wait. Perilous thread, perilous thread. Hmm? Is it like a set or something? It's like a broken up set bonus? Hmm. It rolls randomly. Legendary effect is random. Hmm. I mean... I... Let me think. Meteor... So is the meteor always going to be on the ring? Or is it can be on anything? I said it's like a broken up set, not like a set. A broken up set would be a broken up set, not a set. So if like, you, like let's say you take Talrosh's 8,000 damage and then each item has like 2,000 or whatever, or 1,500 or whatever the hell the math is. The, uh, having it on a random effect on gear is exciting because you never know what you're gonna get. But it's also, there's no identity at this point. Like, that's my first, my first fear, not that I'm right or wrong, just my first fear is like, whoa, I had just talked about identity, right? And then there's no identity. So like the, you could never have a Thunder Fury if it wasn't a one-handed sword, whatever. If you had, this is just identity items. It's just for these. Like you could never have something legendary. Can you stack the same power? I think they're gonna let you stack the same power. I haven't read past this line. I'm just having an open discussion with you guys. Unix will have an item identity due to that, maybe. You think it's cool? There's no longer gonna be the same meta. I would imagine you could stack it because it looks broken up. Like it doesn't say by 800% or anything crazy. It looks like, um, like more broken up, right? Like instead of having a meteor staff, you just add a little, you just sprinkle that around. I don't know. Can't decide between making your chill effects freeze faster or more damaging ground effects on your boots? No problem. 
Hey, no problem. Legendary affixes aren't restricted to a specific slot. I don't mind this, but I'm just worried about long-term effects of not having like iconic things in the game. You know? Wouldn't you, wouldn't people just farm a full gear set with all damaging ground effects? You'll notice a variety of our affixes in the examples above, including elemental resistances and socketed gems for runes, which can appear on items in place of another affix. And of course, attack comes from your weapons and defense comes from your armor. We got that. With the increase to the maximum number of affixes available on items, we're also adding new affixes to the game to make sure there's plenty of diversity. Uniques. Oh, this, this is like the new mythics. Unique items are making a comeback. I like this. Let me just say that I do like this. And I think they just fixed my problem right here. So let me just keep reading. Unique, unique items are making a comeback in a big way to D4. We're embracing the fantasy of these build around items with complexity fixed affixes. Heavily thematic. This is what Blood likes to see. Heavily thematic. And usually class specific powers and distinctive looks. Mmm. Kilt of the Plaguebringer. Your poisons no longer deal damage over time. Instead, 127% of the total damage dealt when you po when your poisons expire. Oh, that's interesting. Have we had a have we had an item like that before? When your poisons expire. Wow. Normally, like it's like you trigger it or something, right? In some way, maybe there'll be a thing that triggers it. Poisons? What class does poison right now? Not Sork, not Barb, not Druid. Mmm. Does Druid do poison in the, the new T4 Druid? I know it has a lightning tree, like a feral tree. Mmm. Necromancer, maybe Assassin. This kilt looks like a Druid kilt though, so maybe chat's right with Druid. It could be an Amazon kilt, I guess. Okay. When Hurricane deals damage, there's a chance it automatically casts Tornado for free. There's another thing when it... There's a chance... Wait. When Hurricane deals damage. That's pretty cool. Poisoned enemies hit by your lacerate or thrash. It is Druid. Yeah, you guys are right. It looks like a Druid item. Poisoned enemies hit by your lacerate or thrash instantly deal 25% of the remaining damage to all nearby enemies. Right. Cool. I like uniques. They even look really good, like this color and style. I almost think like this should be washed out a little bit too now because it looks bright like D3. And this looks more like washed out and cool a little bit. Maybe. Or have a red tint. Anyway. Three unique items available at level 20. A unique will always appear with the same affix. Oh, so there's no damage range. It's like a primal or something, right? There's no damage range on it. Or it just means same affix in general. Like, it'll always be your poisons. So, uniques are not going to change. There might be a damage range still, though. Same affix, different range. Probably different level. Maybe it's based on level, yeah. Hmm. So far, so good, man. This this post has been kicking. Same affix with ranges like D2 uniques. Yeah, you're probably right. Okay. We still like the idea of mythic items, but we don't want to create an item quality that invalidates others. So they're out for now. Mythic items were cool because they were like a set bonus on one item. So instead of carrying like, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, Tal Rasha, it was just on one item, singular, if you wanted that type of playstyle. So Mythics looks like they might even come back in the future, maybe an expansion or something. Yeah. One of the things we loved most about them was the promise of getting a ra random legendary powers on an item, so we folded that into our baseline design. It's like, if you play a lawn build in D3, you can 
build whatever you want, do whatever you want, you know, you have complete freedom, right? It's like amazing. But the thing that sets do that's awesome is they force you to play a certain way, which is interesting, like, you know, um, like with Tal Raj, I use four different elements, for instance. So it does make it also fun in that regard. So if you can bring back that diversity of gameplay in the future with Mythics, that would be pretty cool. Like if you use all fire spells, then you have a chance to be resurrected by a phoenix, like a firebird or something. You know, like I, th I do like the idea of the set bonuses, but not sets themselves. Just like the bonus, I guess. So having it on one item is cool. The base game is Lod slash Lawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's cool that they didn't scrap this because I did like the idea also. Like if you really want to play a certain build, you know, but I guess you could just use that logic and break apart the item and make more legendaries. So if you wanted to play like a firebird, then you should make a firebird legendary and then have other fire skills and things, you know, I guess you could also just use the, you know, but I guess the gameplay change was nice anyway. With the addition of the skills and passives tree, primary stat points and changes to the items in D4, we can't wait to see all the builds you'll create. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Maybe you'll focus on skills augmented by uniques we designed, create something from scratch out of different legendary affixes, or discover a creative pairing of primary stats with specific skills, or even incorporate odd rare magic item to maximize a specific affix to great effect. Wow. That's a bar, huh? Cool. We're excited to read through the community feedback on the updates in this blog. As always, please remember that none of this is final and the game is actively in development. Your constructive discussions around these features will continue to help Diablo 4. We greatly appreciate your support and thoughts about the game. We'll continue to work on itemization throughout the development of D4 and we're looking forward to seeing you at BlizzCon. This is uh, like the third week of February, which is really cool. That'd be cool if I could stream it too. I don't know if I'll be able to, but at least the opening ceremony. I'll be watching it off screen and narrating, I guess. Mm hmm. We have lots to share in 2021 regarding some of our other features that we can't wait to tell you about. Man, oh man. Okay. I guess I kind of did my feedback in the motion, but I can scroll through it again. First of all, amazing. Yeah, first of all, absolutely amazing. This is the best blog post yet. I, did they didn't mention demonic power or angelic power, did they? Or I might have skimmed through it. Um, I hate angelic demonic power being tied together, but they didn't talk about it or I might have over, they did mention it. Really? Angelic power and demonic power, but they didn't reinforce the fantasy of what a barbarian sork or druid is all about. So we went back to our roots. So it sounds like they scrapped it or did they scrap it? I mean, I roasted this so many times on stream. It's gone. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this is the best blog post I ever read for sure. So, um, nice. Scrapped it for int, strength, and dex points. You can just get a legendary that has increased duration or an affix, right? You don't need to have this whole thing. Anyway, I guess my feedback would be, um, let's start from the top here. Demonic and angelic power scrapped. I couldn't be happier. Skill tree. It looks like they're gonna rebalance the tree, which is good and make it easier to get to nodes that you want. Um, which is, I mean, it's a good thing. Can't complain. Um, as you level up, you get like stat points and you get stuff for it. So I still want there to be 99 levels, right? I still want that. I think it's just cool. But at least every level we get in D4 is gonna be awesome because we'll have a lot of points to click and ways to build our character. Like that one to 40 experience will be more impactful if we're like hand designing our character the way we want. You might just want to go like a full willpower, right? Or like if you had like a crazy, like if there's a crazy resource intensive skill, like let's say Hammer of the Ancients drops like half your resource, right? 
and uh, you want to go full willpower as a barbarian, you have the option to do that early, you know? And then you might even, you, you, their leveling spec might even be to go full resource and then respec at max level, you know? It just uh, opens up more leveling play styles that are cool. Um, I love being able to put my stats wherever I want, like, you know, D2, like old school RPGs. And um, that's awesome. This is, this is only a positive thing, basically. And the fact that, you know, this is kind of like D3 where there's like cross stats. So if I want to stack, you know, different stats, then I still get armor for it. You know, like at a high level, we need armor for like certain intelligence builds in D3. So this is kind of cool. It's still like not that crazy in depth, but it's enough, I guess, to keep us engaged, you know. Um, you can add depth through this part right here. I think it would be awesome to have, I know it's like double the work, but Whirlwind upgrade, right? So you have 150 decks and then you unlock this trait. Whirlwind provides a 3% movement speed boost while it's active, stacking up to 15%. And then like, let's say you had 150 willpower or like 75 willpower or whatever the number is. And then maybe it unlocks another perk, you know? So you have like multiple perks or 150 decks or 150 willpower. It has a whole different perk here. You know? Something like that. So like you might not even care about it. You know, you might be like, oh, I don't need the other perk or you might just want that one. Just to have more options would be dope. Then you almost have like last epoch talent trees for each skill in a small way, right? As you level the game and you build your character out, you're like, okay, I need a little bit more int to unlock like another thing. And even if it was a small number, you know, it kind of keeps you thinking about balancing out your character sheet a little bit. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So like this one has 140 willpower and then willpower up here. So the sorceress would have to stack willpower. Right. At level 21, she has like 35. So she'd have to stack willpower to 140 to get ice blades. So ice blades deal additional damage to frozen targets. But what if it was just like int? Like maybe int would offer an ice blade alternate path. You know, ice blades deal additional damage to frozen targets. Maybe just uh, maybe not as strong since it's easy to get intelligence. Maybe like intelligence adds something, and an intelligence and strength increases your survivability while targets are frozen or 10 seconds after targets are frozen and then you can have like a whole line of shit here maybe i'm maybe i'm kicking going too crazy out kicking my coverage you know but if you had then it's almost like a little mini a mini choices in each one and that's like so interesting then you might be like oh shit like i, I want like more armor after the frozen thing ends right or i want to do more damage or i want they could definitely expand on this and make it even cooler. That's what gets me excited. Um, the next bit of feedback was on weapon types. Honestly, I played it at BlizzCon, man, so much. I streamed it. I was in the media room playing this shit. It's amazing. It already feels visceral and impactful. And the fact that they changed it and made it better, it just gets me more excited. I just go in full simp now. Now I'm just like full simp mode, yeah. Because this makes it even better. And um, they added like weapon characteristics to each item. So like, this is what I always wanted too. Like, so um, wands are faster, staves have reduced resource costs, you know, um, axes bleed. That just makes everything feel awesome because now you, you're not even looking just for the right item. Now you could even get the right item type or whatever, which is awesome. So dope, so excited about that. Your know, shields always had this, right? In D3, shields always had like block value. So they just took that concept and put it on everything. The qualities is great. <clears throat> like I had a big, I had like two big feedback videos, right? And all this was in there. So I guess I, uh, this is like a, a blood uh, extravaganza here. This is amazing, dude.
I mean, what more could you want? Sometimes blue will be better than yellow. Sometimes, rarely, blue might be better than legendaries. You know? Um, rares can be better than legendaries, especially if you don't have the right affixes on it. And you get more out of it. Like, you might need more sockets and this and that. A blood extravaganza. <laughs> This is, this is this is exactly what I wanted right here, so I can be happier. Obviously, I always take more stats, but... And I hate seeing weapon attack, but it's a small gripe when you get what you want, I guess. You know? Like, I hate seeing weapon attack, I wish it said something else, but... Like a damage range, or like, yeah, weapon damage range, or something like that, but... It's a small gripe. It looks nicer having more stats on it. Like, um... Let's see what we see on Google Images. Look at this shit. Look at where we started, you know? Look at where we started, bruh. Huh? Four items on it, and it looks so boring, you know? The rares had three things. Look, this is where we started right here. Right? Three, two, three, four. And this looks so much cooler, man. It's so much more interesting. You can see how it used to be, and then already. Even looks better with the item, the like they said, and everything looks nice. Are you the official Blizzard streamer? Nah, what do you mean official streamer? It's a solid blog post. Hmm. Is this sponsored? No, it's not sponsored, you goddamn forehead. Let's see. Magic items can now have the most powerful regular affixes, while rare items get up to five. Yeah, okay, read that. Um, and then this change, I was like, uh... <laughs> they pay a million. This change right here... I'm... I'm on the fence about still. I'm on the fence about still. Yeah. But, I can get on board with it. Yeah, they sent Trace, they sent uh, Widowmaker to my house for a little special treat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said Tracer and I had to backtrack. Uh, yeah, this, I don't know, man. This one, because Uniques exist, it, it fixes it. What's to stop me from... What's to stop me from stacking this on every item? Like, what's to stop me from trading or like whatever I can do to get this on every single item? Like, what's to stop that from being the meta? You know? Like, if I'm a dot build, if they don't stack, that fixes it. If they don't stack, that fixes it. You're a one trick pony? That's pretty much how all of ARPGs work. Multi shot spams multi shot, you know? Flicker strikes, spams flicker strike. I think that they're gonna stack too. That's my only concern, is that the freedom starts to go away when you have this kind of crazy thing that you can achieve. If it's super rare, if it's super rare, then maybe nobody will get this, like a prime, like very rarely will you see this, I don't know. Mm. It needs to be tested. Maybe there's like a, um, what's it called? Like a soft cap or something on it. Yeah, like diminishing, maybe diminishing returns will kick in to help. People are, um, people like, uh, you know, will just take any advantage that they want. So you have to help them. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody goes up on Halloween and takes one candy from the bowl. You know, people just put the whole goddamn bowl in their bag, right? So you have to add stop, <laughs> stops in place to prevent it. You know what I'm saying? Of course, there'll always be a meta, but you want it to be at least interesting, you know? I'm not saying, I never once said, let's just, you know, forget the whole meta. I'm just saying, like, you have to put stop gaps to prevent people from taking the damn candy bowl. Give me all the races. Yeah, that's all. You just have to help facilitate a non-meta environment. It's gonna happen, but you have to try to help facilitate it. It just depends on how rare this is to get. And can you trade these items? If I can trade these items, then I'm gonna end up with a full set here. 
Make legendary powers additive and not multiplicative. That might help. That might help a lot. Yeah. I think I think all of us want to make fun and interesting builds and we want Diablo 4 to be a unique sandbox of content, not something that we feel forced to do. Otherwise, we're not Uber, we suck, leet, barbecue sauce, you know? You know what I'm saying? We want it to be like a sandbox of things to create. So when you have things like this, it could potentially, it could potentially, okay, we're gonna stack fire damage now. Right now we're stacking fire damage the rest of the way. So I do like this. I just hope that there's diminishing returns or something to help stop it. That's all. This is kind of, it's a little concerning. So I'm assuming they took away the legendary crafting thing. They had this idea to take a legendary power and put it on a yellow item. And then that would be your legendary power. Like, right. I am assuming they took that away. Did they mention that at all? Remember that? What was that called? You could like take a Thunder Fury, break it, get the Thunder Fury power and put it on any yellow or whatever. I'm assuming that's gone now, which I was excited about, but the fact that they changed all this, I might not have space now in the game. I like this setup way better. I would pick this method if I could. Break it. This opens up the crafting idea even more. So you would like destroy. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. And then here's the uniques. The uniques are awesome. I think that's great to have like an iconic item in the game. Because this makes it just everybody can get these powers, you know, but this makes it more iconic. This is what I, the um, um, thematic of the item that I would want. I like this a lot. What's up, troops? How you doing, man? That's pretty much my feedback that they crushed it. They absolutely dropped the hammer on this update and they pretty much hit everything I would want in an update. <laughs> I'm not doing SR until I'm done with the Diablo 4 talk here. What questions do you guys have? Let's do a little group Q&A. I just ranted for like an hour.